time schedule here, but we'll make up for it, right? Um, Lección 12, Lesson 12, Gramática, at the bottom of page 258. This is um, talking about the imperatives, or what we also call commands. They start out with the usted and ustedes. And what you'll notice is that the, the signature difference is that the vowel in the ending of the verb switches. So for an AR verb, it becomes E. And for an ER or an IR verb, it becomes A. So looking on page 258, at the bottom, <clears throat> entren ustedes is the plural, formal, so we change the vowel. In, for entrar, it's entren ustedes. Then, <clears throat> if we go to the third line, it says traiganme. What we'll find is that you remember I hope you remember that traer, to bring, uh, the first person singular is traigo, I bring. Similarly with so many other verbs, digo for decir, sigo from seguir, and hago from hacer, etc., etc. So we take that first person singular of the indicative and we make that, that stem, the stem in the in the uh, subjunctive, which is what we use in the usted commands. <clears throat> so we have, traiganme ustedes esos libros. Y'all bring me those books. Escuchen ustedes, y'all listen to this uh, record. Esperen. Now, here we didn't have to say ustedes because we know we're in this command mood. <clears throat> um, Esperen un minuto. Wait a minute, y'all. Vayan ustedes. Now, there we go. <clears throat> We've got an irregular. <clears throat> Here in the uh, subjunctive is vaya. And that's what we use for the formal command, the usted and ustedes commands. Diviertanse. You'll remember that the infinite is divertirse. So it's an IR verb. And we end up with an A, diviertanse. And what else happens with these command forms? The reflexive, <coughs> excuse me, the say, for example, in this case, gets tacked onto the end. It gets tacked onto the end of the positive command. It actually comes before the verb in the negative command, which we'll see later. Empiecen, ahora el examen, from empezar, with a Z. We just revert to the C before the E because we get the same sound out of that. <clears throat> Denme esos discos. What do you think the are? <clears throat> Excuse me. What do you think the infinitive of denme is? It's dar. D E N may we tack on we tack personal pronouns on the end of positive commands. On negative commands, we put them before the verb. We'll see those in a minute. Jueguen ustedes. Now, what happened here? <clears throat> Jugar is the verb. And now we have jueguen. We have to put this silent U in to make this a hard G before the E, because you know, otherwise, you remember, it's pronounced <laughs> as in gemelos. You don't know what gemelos are, maybe, but they are twins. But the pronunciation is what I'm focused on here, gemelos. And here we have way again to keep it hard G, we use a silent U.
So if we go to the next one, after traiganme ustedes esos libros, traiga would be the singular, traigan is the plural, we wouldn't need to say ustedes. It's pretty much understood if you say to a group of people, traiganme, that you're saying um, ustedes. Escuchen este disco. Ustedes is understood, but you, they put it in the uh, thing here to get you used to it. Vayan ustedes con Felipe. Vaya is from ir. It's an irregular subjunctive. Diviertanse. Remember the infinity? Divertirse, an IR verb. That's where the A comes in here for diviertanse. Empiecen ahora el examen, from empezar, with a Z, a Z, it changes to a C. Denme esos discos. <clears throat> Den is the plural of ustedes, for ustedes, so y'all give me <clears throat> those book, those uh, records. Today, I guess we can say discs, right? Wegen ustedes al ping pong. Again, to preserve the hard G, we use a silent U. Wegen. <clears throat> the infinitive is jugar, remember. No me digan eso. Don't tell me that. And these are plurals. These are plural commands to a group of people. And they're all addressed in the formal ustedes. No me traigan esos papeles. Don't bring me those papers. No me los traigan. Don't bring them to me. Or we might even say in English, don't bring me them. No lean esa revista. Don't read that magazine. No pidan más café. Don't order more coffee. No hagan eso. Don't do that. No se quiten los zapatos aquí. Don't take off your shoes here. Why los zapatos instead of sus zapatos? Because we're assuming that they're your shoes, okay? We don't have to we use the definite article instead of the possessive adjective. Now they have a, a nosotros command, which is like let us do something or let us not do something in the negative. <clears throat> Procuremos. Procurar does not mean to procure. It means to try. <clears throat> Procuremos terminar antes de las tres. Let's try to finish before three. Volvamos mañana. Let's return tomorrow. Notice, procurar is an AR verb, and we're using an E in the ending. Procuremos. Volver is an ER verb, we're using an A in the ending. Volvamos. Salgamos ahora. Now, what's happened here? <clears throat> We've derived a root from the first person singular, salgo, and added the subjunctive endings. The uh, command in usted, the commands in usted and ustedes use what we call the subjunctive forms. <clears throat> Jugar is the verb. Juguemos un poco to preserve the hard G. We use that silent U again. Sirvamos café. The root here is, is from the verb servir. But if you go back to the first person singular, I serve, it's sirvo. And that's why we have sirvamos, and then sigamos, charlando, let's keep talking. <clears throat> Seguir means to follow or to continue. Again, <clears throat> the sigo, the first person singular, is where we get the root, sigamos. Similarly, pongámonos el sombrero. <clears throat> now notice what happens here. <clears throat> the nos, which is the reflexive, gets tacked onto the end of the positive command. In a negative command, it'll come before the verb.
pongámonos el sombrero. If you want to say, let's not put it on, no nos lo pongamos, where lo stands for el sombrero. It comes before the verb, no nos lo pongamos. Levantémonos temprano, let's get up early. No nos sentemos aquí. Let's not sit here. Again, notice that sentar is your verb. Sentarse, to sit. No nos sentemos. Sentémonos allá. Okay, now here's what happened in the negative. No nos sentemos. The pronoun comes before the, the uh, verb. But in the positive, we tack it on the end and just add that syllable. And when we do that, we have to add the accent to keep the syllable where it was in the first place. Sentemos is the verb by itself. Sentemonos allá is what happens when we drop that S from the sentemos. Because trying to say sentemosnos is too hard for Spanish people to say. So they drop that first S. Another way, as it says in the right-hand column, to do a, a command form is, vamos a, let's, let's do this. Vamos a jugar al tenis. Let's play tennis. <clears throat> Literally, let's go to play tennis. But in this case, it's just let's play tennis. Vamos a volver mañana. Let's return tomorrow. No vamos a sentarnos aquí. Let's not sit here. Vamos a ponernos el abrigo. Let's put on our coat. Coat, singular in, in, in Spanish, but in English we use the plural coats. <clears throat> All of that is review for you. If not, please write out your question or your comment. <clears throat> Now we do a bit of a switch. For some reason, they decided they're going to start with the negative and on the next page go to the positive. So these are the familiar commands, the two, the singular you, you that I call by first name, and you that I d address without the formal. No me digas mas mentiras. Okay, where do we get digas? is derived from the first person singular, digo, in the indicative. <clears throat> no me digas, don't you tell me more lies. No te pongas el sombrero, ese sombrero ridículo. Don't put on that ridiculous hat. No te levantes a mediodía. Don't get up at noon. <clears throat> Paco, no me des más discos viejos. Des is from dar. Notice that um, <clears throat> it has the S, which goes with the familiar. No me des mas discos viejos. We have a question, Tom. Okay. Why not ponga mosnos or levantimosnos? Why is the S dropped, and how do you know when to drop it? Uh, if I, re if I, pongamoslo, if everybody's on board knowing that the low means a hat, okay, pongamoslo. We've already talked about the hat just immediately before. Pongamoslo is the way we do it. Um, and then, pong. It's P O N G A M O S N O S. Why is that the first S dropped? Well, the, first of all, the LOS, I don't know why you made that plural, but Pungamoslo would work. What's a, what's a, what is the question again? Is it about the MOS? Uh, why is the S dropped? Um, in pongamos, that S is dropped, nos, or levantimos, nos. 
Okay, it's because this re reflexive nos followed the MOS. That's that's why. Um, are we talking about stuff in the right hand column? Pongamon, oh yeah, pongamonos, levantemonos. <clears throat> when you have the nos following, which would be the mos, the first s drops away. Because it's, it would be mosnos, and that's a bit tongue tying for the Spanish. They've decided along the way over the centuries to do it by dropping the first s. Someone's saying that they have trouble hearing, so I'm just going to try to replug. Here. Is, my, is my mic? We'll give that a try. Now, can anyone, can any, can everyone hear me, or can anyone not hear me? Say no if you cannot. No nose, okay. They can hear you. Okay. So this, the, the negative command using two, um, we derive that command form from the first person singular of the indicative. No me digas, mas mentiras. Digo is the first person singular of the in, in, indicative. No te pongas. Pongo, remember, is the, is the first person singular of poner. When we have those G's in the first person singular, we will use that root in the command form, which is really the subjunctive. So. When we get to the subjunctive itself and more uses of it, you'll see that um, back again. No te levantes a mediodía. <clears throat> now, they change levantarse, it's an AR verb. The command form uses the subjunctive, changes the A to the E. Paco. No me des mas discos viejos. The verb is dar, to give. Ana, no te sientes aquí. Now this can be confusing because sentir means to feel. Sentar means to seat. This is sentar. Change to the subjunctive. No te sientes aquí. <clears throat> Teresa, no pagues la cuenta. Now, what happened here? To preserve the hard C, G of the pago, we use a silent U again. No pagues la cuenta. Don't pay the bill. Pepe, no te quites los zapatos en clase. From quitarse, to remove from oneself. Don't take your shoes off in class. We don't say tus zapatos. We say los zapatos, and we use the in the um, reflexive pronoun te. So, if you wanted to be very little about literal about it, it would be Pepe, don't remove from you the shoes in class. But we don't say it that way in English. <clears throat> Ramon, no duermas tanto. Ramon, don't sleep so much from dormir. Notice we've changed the typical E in the ending in the indicative duermes to the command form changing that E to the A. 
Lalo no seas malo. Now this is the command form. This is the the uh, subjunctive form of ser. <clears throat> Lalo, don't be bad. Don't be a bad person, in other words. Enrique, no vayas al cine esta noche. Vaya from here. Don't go to the movie tonight. Carmen, no leas esa revista. Carmen, don't read that magazine. Just look at the pictures. Page 260. Are we all together? Molino is a is a mill. Molino de viento is a windmill. So that's what this picture is all about. Esta solitaria región, this solitary region de España in Spain, empezó en esta in this solitary region of Spain. Empezó el ingenioso caballero Don Quijote de la Mancha. Sus extraordinarias aventuras. In this region, this um, solitary region, this empty region of Spain, began uh, Don Quijote, the ingenious gentleman or knight of, from La Mancha, began his extraordinary adventures. Has anyone read Don Quixote? It's only a thousand pages each part. How many parts? Two parts. There are two parts. <clears throat> And I believe that if you read it more than two or three chapters, you will keep reading it. It is so good, even in English translation. I have read it in Spanish, I think about four times altogether through my lifetime, which has been a long time. <laughs> um, so far, no one else has joined you. <laughs> Well, grab a copy out of the, out of the uh, library and have at it. You will not regret it. Okay, now the commands with two. The affirmative command two does not use the S and does not use the appropriate, the opposite theme vowel. It uses the regular theme vowel. So it's gonna look like a third person singular Pepe, habla con Cristina. Pepe, talk with Christine. Habla, here is a command form. It's not a third person singular. It's Pepe, you, tú, habla con Cristina. Ramon, toma café. Esteban, paga la cuenta. Steve, pay the bill. Rafael, toca la guitarra. Rafi, play the guitar. Okay, in most cases, it is the same as the third person singular. However, <clears throat> there are a, abbreviated forms. We'll get to those. Page 261. Pancho, baila con Ana Maria. <clears throat> Pancho, dance with Ana Maria. Alfredo, descansa un poco. Alfredo, rest a little bit. Jerónimo. Regresa a las seis. Geronimo, come back or go back at six. Regresa, regresar is to regress, right? So it either means come back or go back, and the context will tell you which it is. We don't have a context here, so it can be either one. 
Dorotea, canta algo. Dorothy, sing something. Silvia, siéntate aquí. Silvia, sit here. Now, siéntate. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Not siéntese, because it's not señoras, whatever. It's Silvia, first name. So it's, it's familiar. Siéntate. The command form for two in the positive uses the innate vowel in the ending, the theme vowel, they say. Siéntate, with the two familiar, in the positive. In the negative, it reverts back to the, um, the other. Alberto, despiértate, from despertarse. Albert, wake up. Literally, wake yourself up, right? That te is a, is a reflexive uh, pronoun. And in these, in these positive commands, you'll see the, the pronouns are just tacked on to the verb. Pepito, estate quieto. Estate, not estate, okay? Estate means, that's, that's the reflexive of estar. Be quiet. Susana, dame tus paraguas. Susan, give me your umbrella. <clears throat> Carlitos, quítate ese sombrero. Car, Charlie, take off that hat. Quítate, remove the hat from yourself, okay? <clears throat> Carolina, juega un poco al tenis. Caroline, play a little tennis. Notice that when you, you juega, juega, when you play a sport, it's al tenis. You jugar a sport, whatever. Cristobal, lee ese, este poema. Cristobal, Chris, read this poem. You notice how these look like third person singulars, but these are command forms in the two positive. Ernesto, duerme un poco. <clears throat> Sleep a little. Angela, vive con Barbara. Angela, stay with Barbara. <clears throat> uh, or live with Barbara. Francisco, pide más café. Order more coffee, Francis. Ginés, repite estas palabras. Repeat these words, Jean. Violeta, come un poquito más. Violet, eat a little more. Rosita, sírveme. Remember from sirvo, the first person singular of the indicative. Sírveme, más limonada. Again, we tack the pronoun, the object pronoun, the me, onto the um, <clears throat> verb in the positive. Sírveme más limonada. Serve me more lemonade. Alicia, diviértete en la fiesta. Here we have a true reflexive, diviértete, you have a good time at the party. Gloria, escríbeme el año que viene. Gloria, write me next year, el año que viene, next year, the, the year that's coming. La semana que viene is next week. El mes que viene is next May, month. So, el siglo que viene, the next century. Pepe, óyeme, óyeme. Oye is the third person singular in the indicative. So we tack on the me, hear me. We have the accent on the O to keep the, the, the stress on the same syllable it was without the added uh, uh, pronoun. Esteban, corre dos kilómetros. Steve, run two kilometers. Sounds like a coach, doesn't it? Abre la ventana. Open the window. Abre. Hmm. Is that usted or tú? It's tú. All of these are tú. Aprende algo. Learn something. Quiereme mucho. You know that song. <laughs> Love me a lot. Okay. <clears throat> now. With certain verbs, they become 
in the in the familiar command they become abbreviated, <clears throat> apocopated in a way, in a way. So Enrique, di la verdad. From Desir. Dime tu nombre. Tell me your name. Tell me the truth. Pepe, haz lo que te digo. Hazlo ahora. Pepe, do what I tell you. Do it now. Maria, ve al mercado. Now you could you could be forgiven for thinking that ve there has something to do with ve or to see, but it's the command form in the familiar of ear. Ve al mercado. Ve con Juan. Go to the market and go with Juan. Ramon, ve esa película. In this case, it's ver, not ear. Ve esa película. See that movie. Ve la esta noche. See it tonight. How do you tell the difference between be when it means ear and be when it means see? Well, the context is a pretty good clue. <clears throat> be al mercado, go to the market. Be esa película, see that film. Alfredo, pon el libro allí. Put the book there. Ponte el sombrero. Put on your hat. Put the hat on you, literally. Put on your hat. Estela, sal ahora mismo. From salir to leave. Leave now. Sal con Ana. Go leave with Ana. Pepe, se profesor. Oh my goodness, what's this? Se, with an accent. It's not a reflexive pronoun, because you don't add accents to pronouns. <clears throat> it's from ser. It's the command form of ser. So it means be or in this case, I guess, become a professor. Carlos, se ingeniero. Be an engineer. Carolina, ten cuidado. From tener. Tener cuidado is to be careful in English. Literally, to have carefulness or have caution, but ten cuidado is be careful. Rafael, ven acá. From venir to come. Ben con Adela. Rafi, come here. Come this way. Come with Adela. Questions? I'm running through this pretty fast on you. I have to tell you that I was working on a, a complex, um, I won't call it a spreadsheet, but it's kind of a, a a, a graph of when you use what commands and how and um, I was unable to get it to print because my printer has lost its connection to my computer we tried com converting it to another computer and using a different word processor on it and that failed as well so <clears throat> one of these days I'll visit it upon you we do have a question. Mm -hmm. So those, so these verb forms are all exceptions. Is that true? Well, that yes, and they're but but they're exceptional only in this familiar, the to form. Because if it were usted, let's take the first one. Let's say it's not Enrique; it's Mister Somebody. Diga la verdad in the formal. The next one. Aga. Pepe, aga lo que te le digo, if it were a new state. <clears throat> so there, there are exceptions in the fact that they're, so, they're very common verbs and they're just shortened in the two form, in the positive two form. Now, the next page, 262, we have the contrast between the affirmative and the negative. Take a regular verb like hablar, Pepe, habla con Ana, talk with Ana. No hables con Trini, don't talk with Trini. 
So we have habla, looks like a third person indicative, and we have no hables, which is a true subjunctive in this in the two form. It just it, it is what it is. So you just kind of have to get used to the uh, the patterns. Ramon toma café, drink coffee, Ray. No tomes tequila. Don't drink tequila. Concha, escribe un poema. Conchita, write a poem. No escribas un ensayo. Don't write an essay. Jorge, siéntate aquí. Sit here. No te sientes allí. Don't sit over there. Now, what's the difference here? In the, in the, um, when you have a pro, um, reflexive pronoun <clears throat> or a pronoun object, you tack it on to the positive command. Sientate. On the negative, you do not tack it on. You put it before. No te sientes allí. Juana, tráeme el periódico. Bring me the newspaper, Juana. No me traigas las revistas. You'll find that those verbs that had traigo in the first person singular in the indicative, traigo, I bring, will use the T-R-A-I-G in, uh, in the subjunctive or in the command form. No me traigas las revistas. Lola, Ana, oye Ana, hear Ana, listen to Ana. No oigas a Filipa, don't listen to Filipa. Cristobal, ponte el impermeable, put on that rain, your raincoat. No te pongas la gabardina, don't put on your overcoat. Eduardo, dime tu apellido, tell me your last name. No me digas tu nombre. Don't tell me your sir, for, uh, first name. Nombre means first name. <clears throat> Pepa, sal a las tres. Pepa, leave at three. No salgas a las dos. We had salir, we have the abbreviated sal in the affirmative, and we have the, uh, the, the Subjunctive form in the negative, which derives from, remember the root in salgo, no salgas a las dos. Sara, ve al teatro. Now, ve can mean one of two things. It can mean either see or go. And in this case, go to the theater. No vayas al cine. The negative uses the subjunctive, no bias, don't go to the movie, <clears throat> go to the theater, excuse me. Teatro is theater, not, not the movie theater. <clears throat> Laura, acuéstate temprano, from acostarse to go to bed or lie down. No te acuestes tarde, don't go to bed late. Philip. Ven a las cuatro. Come at four. No vengas a las cinco y media. Don't come at 5.30. So here you're com comparing the affirmative versus the negative. You use the abbreviated form in the affirmative. You use that um, what I call subjunctive derivative in the negative. Again, if I can ever get this chart to print out, <laughs> you'll get a copy. <clears throat> Let's look at the picture and the, and the uh, description. Ronda, which is the name of this town, in la provincia de Málaga, es una de las ciudades más curiosas de España. Los árabes han dejado aquí, entre muchos otros restos, restos are remains in this case, 
un palacio con bellísimos jardines colgantes. <clears throat> bellísimos is the, <clears throat> the, the very bello, okay? The very pretty, very beautiful. Jardines are gardens and colgantes from colgar to hang. So they, <clears throat> the extremely beautiful hanging gardens. Y unos grandiosos baños, grandiosos baths, en todas partes se encuentran. Now, encontrar means to find. Encontrar se means to find oneself or find itself or simply be found. When we use a, a reflexive, oftentimes in Spanish, we interpret that in the passive voice. So, se encuentran literally means they find themselves, but we would say they are found. Okay? And the subject here is restos romanos interesantísimos. So you have to get used to a new word order. And in <clears throat> everywhere, in todas partes, uh, very interesting Roman remains are found. You have to reorder the words in English. Lo más impresionante, the most impression, impressive de la ciudad es el tajo. Tajo is is the re is the word for a canyon, but Tajo is the name of the river that makes this canyon in Toledo. Or in in uh, Ronda, I'm sorry. <clears throat> There's one in Toledo too <laughs> that I've been to. I haven't been to this one. In uh, <clears throat> todas partes se encuentran restos romanos interesantísimos, uh, isimo, isima. That's a very, that's a suffix meaning very. Lo más impresionante de la ciudad es el Tajo Cañón que la divide en dos partes. It divides it. La divide. What is la? It. Hmm. Hmm. What is it referring to? It's referring to Ronda, the town. <laughs> la ciudad. That's why it's la. So this uh, river and canyon cuts the city in two. Actually, I think the river was there before the, the city, so they had to build it in halves. Question. Well, they didn't finish um, the commands. Oh, yes, they did. The, with the two commands, but the Bosotos commands uh, are derived when you uh, in the in the in the in the negative and the positive. In the positive, you take the infinitive and just take the R and strike it and add a D. In the this is in the Bosotos form. So if you look at the second line on two sixty three. Decid eso. Say that. Estudiad algo. Study something. Sentaos aquí. Uh-oh, what happened here? Well, it would have been sentados, except that they decided that when os is the reflexive, we're going to drop the D. Sentaos aquí. Y'all sit here. Haced eso. Do that. The negatives, no digáis eso. Subjunctives, okay? No digáis eso. It's a command form. And that is the vosotros form. No digas is the tú form. No estudies tanto. Don't you all study so much? The singular would be tu no estudies tanto. <clears throat> no sentéis aquí. From what verb? Sentarse. The ace ending is because we're dealing with the subjunctive command form. No os sentéis aquí. Don't you all sit here. No hagáis eso. Again, <clears throat> we go back to the root of the 
subjunctive, which is ago in the indicative, first person singular. Agais, that's where you get the H-A-G. <clears throat> Questions on those commands? These are the vosotros commands, not the ustedes commands. So if you look in the right hand column, <clears throat> taking their, their cue from the last sentence there, sentaos aquí in, in, the, in the exercise, where they drop the D. <clears throat> the, notice that the D disappears when os is added, except for the form idos from ear go away from irse, levantaos, sentaos, divertidos, etc. So ir, because it's so unique in that it's a two-letter verb, it keeps the D in the, in the subjunctive, in, in the uh, command form, idos, y'all go away, <laughs> from irse, to leave, idos. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> affirmative and negative ustedes commands. Do as a choral drill. Well, I'm not going to be able to hear you, so you just choralize. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mi amigo y yo no vamos al concierto. So I want you to say, vayan ustedes al concierto. Vayan ustedes al concierto. Say it out loud whether you have an audience or not. Mi amigo y yo no estudiamos italiano. So we're going to tell you, since you don't study Spanish, Italian, <clears throat> study it. Estudienlo. Estudienlo. <clears throat> Notice that the, the lo tacked on to the command, the positive command now, changes the way that <clears throat> the the, we want to keep the stress on the same syllable we had it without the low, estudian, so we have to write the accent in. <clears throat> Mi amigo y yo volvemos tarde a casa. We come back, my friend and I come back uh, home late. So we want to tell you not to. No vuelvan ustedes tarde a casa. Now, that's the, um, these are the Usted, usted and ustedes commands. Mi amigo y yo dormimos en nuestra clase de historia. No duerman ustedes en su clase de historia. No duerman ustedes. Mi amigo y yo no jugamos al tenis. Jueguen ustedes al tenis. Jueguen. Mi amigo y yo no pagamos nuestras cuentas. We don't pay our bills. Paguenlas. Ustedes, paguenlas. Notice how you have to keep the G hard by using the silent U in paguen and wigen. <clears throat> Mi amigo y yo nos quedamos aquí durante las vacaciones. My friend and I stay here during vacations. Now we're going to tell you not to. No se queden ustedes aquí durante las vacaciones. Simple, quedar becomes the E in the ending. No se queden. Mi amigo y yo perdemos mucho tiempo charlando y tomando café. My friend and I, now perder tiempo is not the same as pasar tiempo. Pasar tiempo is to spend time. Perder tiempo is to lose time, or we might even say waste time. <clears throat> well, we could just say spend time, too, if we want to put a positive spin on it. <clears throat> but we're acknowledging with perder, the verb to lose, that we're, we're, we're 
frittering our time away. <clears throat> so the command for that is, No pierdan ustedes tanto tiempo charlando y tomando café. Don't spend so much time chatting and drinking coffee. <clears throat> Mi amigo y yo escribimos, no escribimos a nuestros padres. My friend, I don't write our parents. Escriban ustedes a sus padres. Write your parents. Or if you prefer, write to your parents. But in either event, the A ah is necessary because it's a personal A. Ah. Page 264, Ken. Mi amigo y yo no nos divertimos nunca. My friend and I don't ever have a good time. So we want to tell you and your friend to have a good time. Diviertanse un poco. Notice the A in the ending of diviertan. It switches from the, from the innate theme vowel. Same way with um, aprender. Mi amigo y yo no aprendemos francés. Aprendanlo. Aprendanlo. Notice we have to write the accent there to keep the stress where, in, where it should be. Mi amigo y yo leemos diarios malos. My friend and I read bad newspapers. No los lean ustedes. Don't read them. Don't you all read them. Mi amigo y yo hablamos en voz alta en la biblioteca. We speak in the, out loud in the library. No hablen ustedes en voz alta en, en la biblioteca. No hablen. The subjunctive form, changing the theme vowel in the command form with ustedes. Mi amigo y yo no hacemos el trabajo que tenemos. My friend and I don't do the work we're supposed to, we have. Háganlo. Háganlo. Remember hago from hacer? Háganlo is the ustedes. Hagan is the ustedes form. And because it's a positive command, we tack the pronoun it, in this case, onto the end. Háganlo. Do it. Y'all do it. <clears throat> Mi amigo y yo nos, uh, somos perezosos. My friend and I are, are lazy. Don't be lazy. No sean perezosos. So sean is the, is the command form of be. Don't in the plural um, ustedes form. No sean Ustedes no sean perezosos is the way that the ustedes is, is understood. Are we done? Um, is there homework for next week? Yes. Go back over these oral exercises, read them, read the question or the, the first and second part, <clears throat> pretend you're in a dialogue with yourself. Um, go back and study how you do command forms in the formal and the familiar, in the positive and the negative, in the singular and the plural. So you've got like six variables there. So it helps if you go, if you try to get it conceptually, and then you also um, go back to page 260 and read those command forms, and, and from there go on to uh, 261, 262. and the top of 263. In other words, go over everything we've gone over um, through um, 
A on 264. Preguntas, comentarios.